Welcome to our demonstration on how to install vCenter Heartbeat 6.6 to protect vCenter Auto Deploy. Prior to installing Heartbeat, we need to make sure that we have installed vCenter Auto Deploy and a TFTP service on this virtual machine. We then need to create a clone of the VM and disconnect its network adapters. Now, on our primary server, let us begin with renaming the adapters. We use public and channel respectively. We first configure the public adapter. Add in the management IP address for this VM and disable DNS registration and disable NetBIOS over TCP IP. On the channel adapter, we set the IP address for the channel network. Similar to what we did on the public adapter, we disable registration for DNS and also disable NetBIOS over TCP IP. Then we go out to a network share and we create a folder where we will store the configuration backup for vCenter Heartbeat. We create a new folder and copy its path. We will specify this path during the installation. Now we locate the Heartbeat 6.6 installation file and begin the installation. On the installation wizard, we click Next. We select this as the primary Heartbeat instance, accept the license agreement, and select our network type as LAN. We select that our secondary server is a virtual machine. Next, we select our channel network and enter our channel network IP address and the IP address we'll use for our secondary server. On this pop-up, we click No, because that server is currently not on the network. We select our public adapter. Next, we specify the public IP address. Next, we enter the management IP address we'll use to manage these servers independently. The secondary node is currently not on the network, so we click No here. Then we rename the servers, AutoDeploy A and AutoDeploy B. Notice that only the installed components have check marks on them, so only AutoDeploy is selected for protection. This is a new feature in Heartbeat 6.6. We enter our administrator credentials and click the checkbox to specify the server is remote and enter our vCenter server name. Paste the folder path we copied earlier. The installer will copy some configuration information to the folder. When we do the secondary installation, we will redirect to this folder and it will use all the setup information we just went through. We see our pre-install checks are successful and we're ready to install. Click Next. If you're installing via remote desktop, you'll see this RDP disconnection when the packet filter gets installed. Next, we need to add in the DNS entries for the servers. We'll create the record for the public name, which is auto-deploy, and give it the public IP address, and then each server's host name with its management IP address. Click Finish on the wizard and click Yes to reboot. Now, on our secondary server, we need to do the install from the console. Notice that there is no network currently and the NICs are disconnected. Ethernet 1 is our public adapter. We rename it to Public and we rename the second adapter as Channel. On the public adapter, we'll verify the public IP is still assigned. We then add in the management IP. Then we go to DNS and disable register and disable NetBIOS over TCP IP. On our channel adapter, we'll assign an IP address. This IP is the same one we assigned to the channel during the primary server installation. Disable DNS registration and NetBIOS. Connect the network adapters. Next, we go to the shared network folder we created, copy its path, and begin the installation. Specify that this is our secondary server. Paste the path we copied, and the installer configures the rest automatically. 
Next, we select the channel adapter and the public adapter. We give an administrator username and password that has the rights to rename this server on the domain. We see our rename was successful. Click Finish and restart the server. We go back to the first server we configured. Open the Manage Server console for vCenter Heartbeat, and we access the local host. We see that both nodes are up and replicating, and all services are started. On the Services tab, we see Auto Deploy. Now we need to add in our TFTP server so that it's protected by vCenter Heartbeat. Click the Add button and select the TFTP service. We want the service to run on the active server and not on the secondary server. Also, we want the service to recover on failure. Click OK. You'll see the service listed and that it's running on the primary and stopped on the secondary server. Now we need to add a new inclusion file filter. So we replicate the contents of our TFTP server. Navigate to Data, then File Filters. Click on Add Inclusion Filter and choose the TFTP directory. Once you see the inclusion filter added, click on the Replication tab and then click on Full System Check to ensure the contents of our newly added TFTP directory are in sync. Now let's do some tests. We'll fail over to the secondary. We click Make Active and we notice that all the applications are stopped on the primary and the networks are switched. We see a brief disconnection and then the applications are started on the secondary and we're replicating back the other direction. Now we'll reboot an ESXi host that is using this auto deploy service. We verify the host still boots while auto deploy is running on the secondary server. Let's make the primary active again. We see the reverse order in progress, and we see all the applications stop. The secondary on the network is stopped, and we've started replicating the primary back to the secondary again. We go to the secondary and see the recovery point is zero millisecond, as it was expected. We'll reboot the same ESXi host again. We verify the host still boots while auto deploy is running on the primary server. This concludes our demonstration on how to install vCenter Heartbeat 6.6 .6 to protect vCenter Auto Deploy. Thank you.